Akar Jagil, Eslahahas, Agus Luher, I will make Lord Live Tranona, or Fermana GEA TV, or Radio, Trace Tree Storm, and Ahar Tree La, Karu, and Kliha, and Chuckin Chakacha, or Kyal, Ach, Emro Fursin, and Chuckin Chahogin. In you, by much Bia Live, Agus Ben Kliha, so Trey Nashinta, Bauta Kahar, Ejar Farmanach, Agus Longford. Me Hain, Agus Peter McGinty, Avias Uber Janta, Dun Kliha Show. Peter, you're very welcome to our broadcast today and we're getting into a crunch game scenario. From Anna sitting on one point after two games played, we have seen good improvements in the in the second game, but there's pressure today not only to perform, but to get something out of it. Yes, I suppose it's, it's a strange time of the year to be saying this is a make or break game. Uh, and unfortunately for us, it's a make or break for Longford as well. We're both in exactly the same boat here. Um, the, the two games that we have played so far... Um, in both those games, we have missed we have missed chances, mm-hmm. we have missed goal chances. Against Antrim, there was a, a strange complexion on the game when we would attack, have a great chance for goal, then not get it, and Antrim were able to get their scores. Um, against Wicklow, I heard somebody after the match saying that we, we um, conceded a nine-point lead. Yeah. Uh, but it was, it was a nine-point breeze, at least. It was yeah. the two goals and five points that we... Didn't uh, yeah. didn't take in that first half that ultimately caused us uh, the problem. Uh, like we could have been we could be fifteen points ahead at half time. I suppose Peter, you'd be more worried if you weren't creating these goal chances than not not converting them can be can 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 be rectified. Yes, I agree with you entirely. Uh, we are creating the chances, but you know how many games is it going to be before we start taking those chances? Um, the, well, the the goal chances especially the goal chances are game changers. Well, I looked at the results for Longford coming into this year. In their first game, they were beaten 4-9 to 111 by Limerick, so they shipped four goals in that game. One the last day against Louth in, in a game which ended up a draw. So if if you're looking to convert goal chances, it seems that Longford's a team to start off with. Yes, well, funny, I looked at those results as well, and um, it, it seemed as if they conceded the four goals against Limerick, but then they sorted themselves out to a certain mm-hmm. extent, and they only conceded one against Louth. Which, which and it was late goal as well. I, it, it, it shows improvement, I suppose, to that extent. One of the other things I noticed about them, the scorers, uh, both their two corner backs and their two wing half backs have, have scored. I'd be just a wee bit worried about the Fermanagh forward line's ability to stop uh, the Longford defenders getting into go- uh, point scoring positions. So there's a whole lot of little things there that I'm not quite sure about yet until we see see how it pans out. Well, just when you mention the team, do you think we can take a look at them now? And we'll start with the Fermanagh team. I suppose the big news here is to change a goalkeeper. Sean McNally is injured and he'll be replaced by Enniskill netminder Kean Newman. Just a word about Kean Newman. He's coming into this game. It's his first Fermanagh start away from home uh, against Longford. A lot of pressure on him. Yes, well, I suppose, look at any go- goalkeeper, um, the last line of defence, uh, very unforgiving position. So there is always pressure on the goalkeeper. And he'll have experienced that at club football as well. Um, but from Fermanagh's point of view, uh, sometimes you, you make changes because you have no other choice. And in this case, it'll be interesting to see how Keane gets on. Uh, I'm not saying he's the answer to all our problems, but I'd like to see how he gets on. Well, in replacement of Keane Newman, who used to be the substitute goalkeeper, now it's Owen Milanofi from Canale, who'll be wearing the number 16. One change in the full back line, and that the full back line is Gard Kavner wearing number two, Ryan Lyons is wearing 18, he's replacing Johnny Casty, and Luke Flanagan's wearing number four. More than we can't, don't expect Ryan Lyons to be playing at full back, Peter, I don't think. Well, I hope not. Um, I'm not uh, just looking at the team in general, I'd say maybe, maybe Josh Larguelis comes back into defence somewhere, and uh, then uh, the full back. It depends to some extent what, what the Longford full forward. Uh, Jason Matthews is like if it's a small quick player then it's possibly Luke Flanagan um, or, or even um, Gareth Kavanagh. Gareth Kavanagh if he's a big strong fella it could be James yeah. James McMahon so um, we, we'll just have to see we'll how, see how that goes. Out, yeah. the rest of the Fermanagh team plays as lined out with Aidan Breen James McMahon and Declan McCusker in the half back line in the middle of the field it's Ryan Jones and his Enniskillen uh, teammate is Brandon Horn. Half forward line of Kieran Corrigan, Dara McGoran, and Josh Largo. And with a full forward line, Gary McKenna, Connell Jones, and Sean Quigley. A word about Gary McKenna, Two Peter. He came on and so last week against teams. Wicklow and scored what we thought was a winner at that stage. He's got his reward, which is a start here today. So it's a big opportunity for Gary McKenna to get his place. I mean, one of the areas where Fermanagh needed. 
improving on was getting scores. Yes, and uh, I mean, like he, he's an experienced player. He's not an experienced from a senior player, but he's an experienced player in terms of the amount of football he's played for Dargonley and the, the level of that competition. Um, and the point he scored was a brilliant score. Very calmly taken, you know, came in off an angle, took the ball and, and, and literally tapped it over the bar when Fermana badly needed it. So, no, no, I agree with you. He deserves he deserves his chance today. Um, I'd just be a little bit worried um, about the work rate of our forward line when we haven't got the ball. Um, but I, I'd say that's something that uh, Kieran Donnelly has been maybe hammering. Especially with two weeks to prepare for it. But we'll just go quickly go through the uh, Longford team as with a minute just to go before our on the vein. The experienced goalkeepers Paddy Collum from Father Man and Gaines. The full back line Patrick Fox, Andrew Farrell, Barry O'Farrell. The half back line is the two Killaloo em young Emmets players of James Moore and Michael Quinn. And they're joined by Irla, Irla O'Sullivan from Rathclay. In the middle of the field, Ryan Moffat and Darren Gallagher. Half forward line of Keelan McGann, Desi Reynolds, and Joseph. Hagen. One change in the Longford team sees number 25, who is Mark Hughes. He replaces Dara Doherty. The full forward who Peter mentioned there was Jason Matthews and the corner forward is Oren Kenny. Just in, in a word quickly, Peter, last year these two teams played in Enniskillen and there was a big change um, from Limerick or from Longford. That day they lined out with they lined out with um, Robbie Smith, David McGivney and Liam Connerton in their full forward line. They created from on a world of problems. There's none of those players available for long for the day. So there's a lot of players who are getting a, who are maybe starting their getting a start for the Longford team. Yeah, well, funny enough, when I was looking at the team, no more than yourself, I, I, Robbie Robbie Smith mm. jumped out at me the fact that he wasn't listed on the team or in the subs. Now whether he's come in because people are injured and so on, I don't know. But I'd I'd be glad not to see him, yeah. sort of thing. Um, they, their players, I mentioned earlier on about their defenders uh, scoring points. Uh, they have the footballers Ish, in defence. And like Darren uh, Gallagher in the middle of the field is an yeah. imposing big midfielder, so that will be a contest. Um, Peter, a word about the conditions for today's game. It's a lovely day here in the Midlands. Bit of a breeze blowing, as, I, as far as I can see, from left to right, straight up the field. Just taking a look at the flags in front of us. and We'll have to keep our sheets close together here as well, or they'll blow away as well. Yes, uh, and, and funny Longford, I don't it's know if they did see the toss now, whether they won the toss or not. Um, big, strong... Um, uh, your man Andrew Farlett full back and I yeah. think I remember him from I last remember year him too. last year too yeah big strong and man. he's not afraid to go forward no, either no no uh, so he's he's going to pick up Sean Quigley so as the teams are lining up in front of us uh, Peter mentioned there Longford will be playing from our left to our right with the aid of a strong breeze in this first half the referee is Barry Judge he throws the ball up and it's Brandon Horn going for that ball immediately. Longford win it now and they're away with their centre half back, who is Michael Quinn, the captain of the team, plays a cross field ball into the 21 metre line. It's a pace race. Aidan Breen is in there with one of the Longford players. Touch the ball on the ground and from to get that first free out, which Breen takes early, gives it to his captain, Declan McCusker, now from Mana with Ryan Jones on his own 45 metre line. Comes to Ryan Lyons here now on this side of the field. Two Longford players in front of him needing support. Goes back to Jones and Fermana. Settling down here, Peter. Getting A couple of players are getting an early chance to get their hands on the ball. Longford had a foray into the field, but touched on the ground. Yes, uh, I see just looking at the way Longford have set up against the breeze. Barry O'Farrell, the number four, the cornerback, is, uh, is playing as a sweeper. Now there's a turnover there. 
So away Longford go again and it's sprayed over to this right hand side of the field. It's the wing half back that's gone over his head and that's going to be a sideline ball. That ball is trying to find James Moore. The breeze is a bit stronger than we thought, Peter. It was Possibly all right. And that, funny enough, that makes it more difficult. Uh, that was certainly a case in the Wicklow game. You couldn't even pass the ball five yards of your fist, but the wind affected it. Sideline mm-hmm. balls back to Keane Newman. He gets his first touch now, and from Anna have the ball on the edge of their own D. That's Brandon Horn over there. Longford sitting back reasonably well, so from Anna with a chance to break forward here. That's Ryan Jones on that far side of the field. He's got Declan McCusker in midfield. Jones carries it over here now to Ryan Lyons, who replaced he replaced Johnny Casty. Lyons loses the ball, a bit of hand and error. I think he's fouled the Longford player there. I don't know, was it the surface, Peter, or what happened, but speaking of errors, that ball has been kicked straight to Declan McCusker, waited on it to bounce, danger in there, but that has been sorted out now, and from Anna have overturned it, it's in the hands of the full forward, who's Connell Jones, he gives it to Ryan Lyons, and there it comes to Ryan Jones as well, coming to this side of the field, turns back inside. For Mana, a pretty bunched inside the 45 metre line, there's six, four, five, six, seven for Mana players in there. Yes, just looking at the full forward, and Sean Quigley, Trying to make an air scoring opportunity draw. here as Dara McGorn had a good run inside. Gives it to Declan McCusker. He was just skirting around the edge of the D on the 21 metre line. Declan McCusker's fouled a free in for Fermanagh. About, what is that, 10, me- five, 10 metres from the right hand side of the post. So it's not a very acute angle for the right footed kicker, Peter. But a player like Sean quickly should be pointing this. It doesn't matter nearly where it is, um, that distance from the goals. He would expect he would expect to point it, and he hopefully he will. Uh, just to, that change, we were wondering about who was going to play full back. Aidan Breen has gone to play full back. Um, Ryan Lyons is wing half forward, and Josh Lagoelis is sort of in the in in defence. And just when you mention that, when I look at the full for the twenty five full forward, da- da- Aidan Breen seems to be picking up Darrow Daherty. Luke Flanagan is picking up Oren Kenny, which must leave then Gart Kavna on on Jason Matthews, so Sean Quigley with this right footed shot, chipping that ball in, over the bar, from Manic get the first score of this game, and it's a free from Sean Quigley. He's top scored for Fermanagh so far, quite a lot of them coming from frees, Peter, but gets his account opened early. Yes, now Fermanagh putting on a press on this kick out. Um, and it was, the ball went through the hands of Connell Jones, and now it's been picked up over there by the substitution, who is Mark Hughes. Now, away Desi Reynolds going forward, left footed shot heading in, and that's gone over the bar. That's an immediate response from Longford there, Peter. It probably stemmed from Connell Jones in midfield. The ball just went through his hands, went through his fingertips. Well, the other thing about it is, well, uh, James McMahon wasn't sure what he was going to do, and the ball broke behind the two of them. Um, and that's and it was picked up by Mark Hughes. That created the score, literally. Uh, and they had, you know, everybody was marked, they had a kick it long, and yet we didn't contest it properly. So Kean Newman goes long with his first kick out here. It's Connell Jones going for that one. That's broken down by Michael Quinn. It's been picked up by the midfielder. He's Ryan Moffat. And away they go again onto that far side of the field. It's Ryan Lyons. He's chasing Mark Hughes. The two players who have come on now back over here to Joseph Hagen. As Hagen gives it in here. That's a, not a great ball for his Longford player. But he has it. Oren Kenny has it inside the 13 metre line. Right footed swinging that ball in. And that's gone over the bar. That's a good score, Peter. Yes, um, for Longford, uh, and this was a, a break from from Anna's point of view. It was a kick, a kick out, a mm. break from the middle of the field, and we didn't win the break. Uh, so hopefully we're not going to be camped in our half because we can't catch clean because they're breaking the ball, and then we can't get the break when it hits the ground. Longford really are putting the press on here as Kean Newman looks to go long again. He's coming over to this side of the field. Similar area, he went for the last one. Brandon Horn going for it, and Horn does well, catches that ball, wins his mark. That's a good, fr- that's a good play, Peter for. For Mana to turn over the pressure, but in saying that, there Brandon Horn is trying to find Kieran Corrigan, goes to ground, and it's been picked up by Keelan McGann. McGann's away like a rocket down that right hand side of the field. Declan McCusker doing well now. Aiden Breen's in there too, it's gone to the end line. McGann with two for Mana players. He flips that ball back onto Declan McCusker, but luckily enough, it went out over the lane off Declan McCusker, but it had already crossed the end line as the umpire had his hands wide open. Yes, it's just, just taking us a while to settle. It, we, we saw a a strange turnover by Ryan Lyons earlier yeah. on where he slipped and the ball yeah. uh, skipped his grasp. Um, that, one, Horn. that one there, Brandon Horn had made a brilliant catch and then the ball turned over. And with this breeze, it's very easy for Longford to transfer or transition, as the fashionable word is, to transition from the def- middle of the field to an attack. 
So that kick out was taken short, which Fermanagh have won. They have retained possession, and it's Ryan Jones inside his own 45 mid line. Gives it to the captain, Declan McCusker. Now, as Fermanagh look to go forward, that's Dara McGorn. It's uh, in front it was Josh Largo Ellis who showed for that there. Gives it back to Aidan Brin, his own 45 meter line. As Fermanagh start to move in a wave over there, I think that's Luke Flanagan on the far side of the field. James McMahon coming inside here now. He's got as far as the Longford 65 metre line, gives it to the captain, Declan McCusker, and over here now to Ryan Lyons. Ryan Jones indeed. I suppose just looking at Fermanagh's play, Peter, they are playing against a strong breeze here now. It's patient build up, I suppose we could say. Yes, and it, it's very difficult to kick in long ball yeah. against that breeze. What Longford are doing as well is there's nine, seven, and four all drop back outside the 20 metre line to cut out the long ball. Sean Quigley with a good yeah. fist pass, now in for Manor with an opportunity. That's Josh Largo, and as he's looking for support, it's Darren McGorn. McGorn breaking forward, took a lot of steps, but the referee said play on. Now it's Connell Jones left footed, hitting that ball in, and it's going away. That's unfortunate. I suppose Brandon or Darren McGorn was lucky. I think he took, but he uh, maybe he got. Oh, he's been fouled as well. Yeah, I, funny, I thought Josh Largoella should have taken the shot himself. Yeah, he, he was the freer of anybody. Anybody after he laid the ball off was under more pressure than he had been. Um, here we go with another kick out. Kick turned out. over now, and that's a poor ball into the Longford forwards, which Ray and Jones has cut out. And as Jones, he finds Connell Jones, and then that support from Brandon Horn as well. Horn coming back to James McMahon. You were just mentioning. I see. Three Longford players, nine, seven, and four, as you said, Peter. They're a, a second bank of defenders, really, which cuts out a lot of space in front of any the Fermanagh forwards. They're going to have to carry it in. Yes, and when they carry it in, those players will be able to engage with them. So the ball's still in the hands of Ryan Jones on his between the 45 and 65 middle line. He finds James McMahon trying to get away from the tackle of the Longford midfielders and referee Barry Judge says that James McMahon was fouled there he was kind of going to ground and won his free it's just outside the tw the edge of the D here Peter 25 metres out you would expect this for another one for Sean Quigley yes I've seen him pointing these on a regular basis now the wind <coughs> we're not sure what the wind is like because we're not down there uh, James McMahon probably was happy enough to get that free because the, the thing had just closed up completely around him but still it's a chance for him <coughs> to get another score as Sean Quigley takes that from his hands, just about over the lane, over the bar indeed, and it's two points apiece. So two points from two frees from Anna, still waiting on their opening score from play, and they have had opportunities as well, Peter. Well, look, I don't care how they get the scores, Kieran, to tell you the truth. Uh, but this kick out, oh, well kick out done. turned over. That was well done by Josh Larguelis. Eight and a half minutes played in this first half. Now it's Kieran Cargan getting inside the 45 metre line. He had a dummy run from Darren McGorn. McGorn does get it eventually. Now he's faced by the full back, who's Andrew O'Farrell. And the referee Barry Judge uh, judges that Darren McGorn over carried that there. God, that's what decision. he said anyway. Yeah, no, no, that was a decision. There's no doubt about it. Um, it was. Like well, he, he has to call them all now. Well, it, well. Um, Let's face it, the referee's never wrong here until mm. he can do it every next. Yeah. Uh, but having said that, I thought uh, Darren McGurn was just getting started to run. Um. So away we go, the ball's come to this side of the field now. It's the corner forward, Owen Corny Kearney. He gives it to the midfielder, Ryan Moffat and Longford are breaking inside the 45 metre line. Back here now to Irla O'Sullivan, the defender. And then it's Joseph Hagen as well, quite bunched in there. Three, four, five from on a player's around, but it comes to Desi Reynolds. Useful player hitting that ball in, right footed, going to tail away. Right, well, that was probably more in hope than anything. Uh, Fermanagh were quite well set up. It, I don't know whether it was because Longford took a little while to build, but Ryan Lyons had got himself back into a sweeper position, and there were there were plenty of players back to engage with the Longford boys. Approaching 10 minutes gone here in the first half, the scoreline still remains. Fermanagh, two points. Longford, two points. With 10 minutes gone, Peter, a couple of hand and errors, I'm sure, will, will be bothering the Fermanagh players, but they'll be... Reasonably happy, I would think, given the conditions. Dara McGoran going up well there, winning that ball, gets us free as well. Right, I'm sorry, I wasn't going to answer you there when that ball was in the air <laughs> to see who got you it. You were watching it. I was watching it. Um, Dara McGoran took that well. And that's two or three balls we've caught cleanly in the middle of the field, which is, is a good sign. Well, um, part of it too is settling into the game, like yeah. initially... The first score that uh, Longford got was from a uh, kick out, which kind of just went through the hands of Connell Jones. But once you get a couple of minutes played and a few touches, you get acclimatised to the yeah, game, I suppose, as well. Yeah, and you do, you're better, you're more accustomed to the to the conditions. That no, I think from what I have settled reasonably well. Um, Longford won't be that unhappy with how they have settled either, to be honest. Um, 
two pretty even teams like we were talking about their position in the in, in, in the league Peter their managers are both in the first year as well waiting on their first victory so yeah the, like the last time they played here as well it was a draw so yeah. you know they, they are at a, at a, at both of them are at a certain level James McMahon breaking inside the 45 metre line the solo gets away from the ball the, gra the conditions seem very heavy that's picked up nicely by Ryan Lyons he's trying to spin away from the Longford players now back to Sean Quigley right footed given that plenty of air it's not going to drop in and indeed it's swollen in the breeze as well oh, oh, oh. Declan McCusker was definitely fouled there Peter there's no doubt about it the goalkeeper pulled him down but the play goes on ahead it's the Longford uh, substitute it's the Longford full back he's Michael Quinn giving it over here now to Irla O'Sullivan trying to get away from the challenge of Brandon Horn O'Sullivan looking to hit this ball left footed he's got a midfield colleague who's Darren Gallagher but he continues that ball over the far side of the field and well, James now, McMahon was fouled yes and that's probably a reaction I didn't see that much more in that yeah. than there was in the yeah. previous one where the goalkeeper well, took out Dickie. I think first thing so to, for, for, for our viewers the, or listeners there was a high ball kicked in by Sean quickly I mean Sean wasn't about the 13 metre line the ball nearly ended up behind the 13 metre line it kind of went in and swirled back around and then it bounced as Declan McCusker was going for it there was definitely interference from the goalkeeper yes uh, th maybe that's a, a neutral word to use at this stage uh, but it, it sh showed us a couple of things it showed diff how difficult it is to score from play on these goals how strong the wind is and the fact that the high ball I thought the high ball caused them a bit of panic yeah um, and another thing that I would have noticed as well, Peter, the, the pitch, the conditions yeah. look, look too bad from here, but there's a lot of kind of slipping going on, and I mean, look, we have had a lot of rain in the last while, so we'll have to, oh, tough challenge in there, Luke Flanagan loses the ball, and Longford turn it over, and they're breaking inside their own 45 metre lane, it's the, it's the wing half back, Yellow Sullivan gives it over here to Oren Kenny, referee, Barry Judge says that's going to be uh, a stop on the play as Luke Flanagan is going to ground. It was a heavy challenge, Peter, Ooh, I, but I, I think Luke Flanagan was going to ground as well. It's far too early for us to be critical of the referee, I think, because we've... Well, we'll, we'll, we, will we criticise each other instead? Well, we could do that, all right. Um, although we're both from Derrick <laughs> Um So, uh, that that was a foul now. That was a foul. That was more of a foul than the one that Decky McCusker uh, suffered earlier yeah. on. Um, if we're looking for an, it was a heavy challenge, I suppose. Oh, is well, what here it, it was a heavy challenge as long as it wasn't you who was here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now the play is going to continue, and it's been picked up by the midfielder. He's Darren Galler. Comes back to the goalkeeper. In, sorry, in big pardon, it was Michael Quinn who hit that there right-footed ball. This is a high ball in first test for the Fermanagh. That's been won in there. It was won by Mark Hughes hitting that ball and going wide. When Peter, we were talking about. We were talking about the high ball into the full back line. That was a cross field ball. It went straight into the hands of Mark Hughes. He took his opportunity. Probably had a bit more time because he got away from the, the cover and that there left foot to put the ball wide. I think he was a bit off balance by the time the ball, because of the wind carried it a little further than they had expected. Well, we can all agree on that. Yeah. Ball fisted forward there by Ryan Jones. Now it's been picked up by the uh, midfielder. He's Ryan Moffat over here now again to Darren Geller. Bit of a right footed shot that's a great shot and over the bar score the game so far Peter I suppose yeah and again just illustrates what the breeze is like that was a good score Darren Gallagher scored three points in their last game so he is a he's a good kicker of the ball he's a free taker as well um, no that was that was worrying to tell you the truth because he must have been the got to 40 he was he was like, yeah maybe angle. maybe more even as yeah. well when you had the angle in as well that's yeah, right three yeah. points to two Longford lead here Kian Newman Options don't seem great here. He's going to have to come to this stand side of the field now, and it's between Dara McGorn and Connell Jones. Connell Jones gets a fist to it, and Dara McGorn catches it. So that's another kick out, which for Mana have won, and a long one too against this breeze. Now it's Connell Jones coming down this stand side of the field, doing well, gets away from the two players, ships a challenge, gives it to Ryan Jones, and back here now to Brandon Horn as well. As for Mana, three points to two. They're behind here. Check of the watch, 15 minutes played in the first half. We're approaching the halfway point, and it's Declan McCusker on that far side of the field. Gets away from the challenge of the front half forward. He's Keelan McGann. Now it's over here now to, um, it's come over to Connell Jones, indeed, outside the 45 metre line. Too far to take a shot, Peter, but Fermanagh are just probing, waiting for an opportunity to turn up now with Sean Quigley hitting the ball. He was trying to find Gary McKenna, McKenna battling for that there, but there's three Longford players around him. And we could hear Sean Quigley, he was, he, he, as soon as he kicked his account, I think he knew that it wasn't yes, a pass. he hadn't seen the player. He hadn't yeah. seen the, the, the extra uh, Longford player. 
Um, fair play to the Longford player for getting yeah. into that position. And when you were talking there, Peter, that was there was a pass over there to the Longford midfielder, Ryan Moffat. He slipped, and a hand in there, and the ball's gone out over the sideline. It's just what I was talking about, the 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 surface. The surface seems yeah. very heavy. Two from Anna players on the side of the field, but... Well, look, there's been a serious amount of rain this last fortnight, and yeah. it, it's bound to have affected the pitch. I can see where they've rolled it as well. It probably have it spiked, maybe. Uh, but they're still... Uh, it's inherently slippy. So away we go again now, and it's from Anna on the Longford 65-metre line. It's in the hands of Luke Flanagan. He's over there. He's got a support from Brandon Horn and Ryan Jones as well. I mean, for Fermanagh to be playing against the Breeze, they have quite a lot of the possession in the first yeah, half. Yes, but of course that's because they're not moving it forward quickly. Yeah. They're going side to side. They're keeping possession. Retaining possession. Yeah, concentrating on that. Kieran Carrigan, two from Longford players. He's does well to get okay. the ball away to James McMahon. And Fermanagh, I suppose, they can just continue playing on there. It's They're still between the 45 and the 65 middle line now. It's Declan McCusker over here to James McMahon as well. Trying to keep a lot of width into it too. If, if, if Fermanagh have gone from one side to the other. Yeah, he's trying to stretch him, but they, they can't kick it in. Uh, Darren Gallagher's Darren in McGowan's there. going to ground, needs to get the ball away, and it's gone to James McMahon. He fists it back to... Us. Another instance where Darren McGowan kind of just lost his foot, but he did well to get the ball yeah. away, and Fermanagh have retained possession. They still haven't gained much ground here. Yes, but they still have the ball. Um, and I'm not sure that they're going to be kick, able to kick it in. The midfielders and halfbacks of Longford have got back in to cover that ground around the D. So it's not going to be kicked in successfully. It's probably going to have to be ran. And we have tried that once or twice and ran into traffic. Um, so we just have to keep probing. We're still between the 45 now. This is Sean Creeley getting inside the 45 metre line trying to find he had Connell Jones going with him but just the solo got away from him now. Longford have turned over now. It'll be interesting to see how they get from defence to attack. It's the corner forward. He's Oren Kenny. First time ball in. One on one in there and that's been won by the mid by the substitute who is Mark Hughes. Mark Hughes took his mark Peter but he was one on one in there and had a goal opportunity. I think that was one of those times where he'd been safe for not taking the mark. Yeah, um, yeah. He, he, he's got to score anyway, yeah. uh, Mark Hughes, now it's four points to two, but I yeah. mean, one-on-one -on -one in there, I know he'd lost his footing. Yes, but the funny, the, our, our Fermanagh's problem was that we, we had committed so many men to keeping the ball, to spreading it wide and doing so long in the, around the middle of the field in their 45 that there was ocean to ground, uh, as was illustrated by that kick. High ball in midfield now, and it's a Longford player trying to pick it up. Bit of a rook developing, but Longford have won it eventually now, and it's come over here to the centre half back. He's Michael Quinn looking to deliver that ball, chips it in nicely. It's Mark Hughes again. Ball gets away from Mark Hughes that time. It was bouncing in front of him, but another handling error, really, Peter. I would say like it just went yeah. through his possession. Well, I think in front of him, the ball went over James McMahon's head. James put up his hands, and the full forward or the, the substitute put him off. for a moment didn't know whether it was going to come through or not. Um, Mickey, Mickey Quinn at centre half back to number six is sending in some great ball with that wind. Yeah. But mm. Now, as for Mana goes, Brandon Horn inside the Langford 45 metre line. He's looking to find Connell Jones. Get, goes to ground, but Jones, oh, well, that was well got back by the Irla O'Sullivan there. It's a 45 for Fermana, five metres to the left hand side of the post. Was yeah. a scoring opportunity for Connell Jones? Oh, Fermanagh had done well with three players that cut through that whole Longford defence. Yeah, Brandon Horner did did well to get into that sort of position that he was in, and then the ball to uh, Connell Jones was it wasn't quite perfect, but still had time. He I thought he should have had time to get it away. But I must give credit to the to the wing half back Irla O'Sullivan, Irla O'Sullivan who had been floating about in a sort of a sweeper role, immediately spotted the danger and got over, and it was a good block. Uh, yeah really was a good block. So now with Sean quickly lining up this 45, kicking into a strong breeze, Peter, um, though it'll be interesting Ooh. to see how this one goes, and indeed the breeze seems to have picked up just as Sean's about to hit this, so he's lining up his connection, gets not too bad a connection, that's heading in, it's going to drop short, it's fisted forward, and it's come out with as much venom as it went in now, Longford have it with Mickey Quinn, he gets away from two from Anna players, Gary McKenna, Good foul, you know, for for the forward. It takes the momentum out of Longford there because Mickey Quinn, we've seen how he can distribute the ball. Yes, he was going to get away. Um, it was a foul that didn't get a yellow card or anything like that. didn't even get a ticking, so... <laughs> Your description of it was a good foul, Kieran. <laughs> <laughs> 
Anyway, Longford have been held up over there. It's another free for them, and it's their centre half forward, who's Desi Reynolds. He has it inside the 65 metre line, coming over to this stand side of the field. That's another ball that's very close to the end line. I mean, not only is the wind blowing up and down the field, but it seems to be going crossways as well. It seems to be nearly going in at an angle. Yeah, but yeah diagonal wind almost. Fermana will be able to judge that as the game goes on ahead. So, free in for Longford in the 45 metre line. That looks as if it was Mickey Quinn who uh, went to ground. I think Conal Jones maybe blocked him off. He was going to take a return there, and uh, Conal, Conal Quinn, who had tracked him, uh, was in a position to impede him. So now it's going to be the midfielder, Darren Gallagher. We've seen him getting get a very good score from the sideline. He's going to hit this off the ground, 45 metres out, 5 metres to the right-hand side of the post. Yeah, and if his he, record he is... Get the accuracy well, yeah, you'd imagine that the wind did carry it. Yeah, um, his record from the game so far this year would suggest that he is a good free taker and with the wind in his back... Uh, but the only issue he would have, Kieran, is that uh, diagonal breeze maybe that we talked about earlier, pulling it towards the right. So Darren Gallagher lining this up and he got a very bad connection on it. It was won by one of the Longford inside forwards, who's Mark Hughes. He spins around, gets that over the bar now. Longford open up a five points to two lead. I tell you what, Mark Hughes is having a fair impact yeah, on the game. Was, was it his third point? Yeah, to be a man who was... So, referee Barry Judge has said that uh, we're, I didn't see it now, but we're getting first hand information, Peter, that the ball blew off the tee for Kia Newman. and uh, As he was in the act of striking, I think. Yeah, and yeah. Barry Judge's rule that that was kicking a rolling ball, which isn't allowed. Throw up ball, which for Mana have won. Now it's James McMahon over there. This Kieran Carrigan gets away from the challenge of Mickey Quinn. And now Carrigan with a good opportunity to run up this side lane. He still has it, gives it over then to Connell Jones. Support there from Declan McCusker now. And for Mana look as if they're going to spread it over to the far side of the field, that's where Ryan Lyons is, he's got Garrett Kavanagh with him as well, Ryan Lyons is from on a look to stretch Longford over there. So I'm just looking down now and there's very, there's only two, one or two from Anna players, one or two Longford players inside their 45 and as we are slowly building towards the middle of the field, there are more and more, naturally enough as opposed in the modern game, there are more and more uh, blue shirts filtering back inside their own 45. Yeah. Well, just as you were, Fermanagh have five forwards inside the Longford 45 middle lane. It's a wee bit now. Longford have one sweeper back. He's That's uh, Mickey Quinn. There's Fermanagh still retaining the ball in and around midfield. I know what you were saying, that if they could have got it away that wee bit earlier, that there was bigger spaces open, but... Impossible against that. Very, di very yeah. certainly very difficult, well. as you say. Now, Ryan Jones has it. He's getting inside the 45 metre line. I thought a shooting opportunity had opened up for him now. Ryan Lyons coming round, gets a free in from the referee by a judge. That's at least three fee frees, I would say, for Mana have a, 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 a attacking freeze that uh, Barry Judge has ruled for. for Mana. They're getting gradually more difficult as well because now this one's five metres outside the edge of the D for Sean Quigley. Yes, the Longford boys might call that a good foul, Kieran. Mm. Uh, we'll see, we'll see. Well, they'll be just on the border now ah. because it's. <laughs> yes, so well. Sean, is, Sean w couldn't decide whether to kick it off the ground or out of his hands. Going um, out of the hands. Gets a good connection, but a swirling away. I mean, yeah, he would have needed to kick, far He would have needed to kick that 20 to, metres out beyond yeah. the, right, the right hand post for to allow for the, the wind. Yeah. So it is diagonal as you saw it. And as, as, as Sean was hit, as it was tailing away to go over the line, it, as you say, Peter, at least 10 metres further wide yeah, that it yeah, went. Yeah. Five points to two with 25 minutes played in this first half. And that's a free in for Fermanagh. Connell Jones going down to pick that up. And he was fouled by Ryan Moffat. Looks as if Ryan Moffat is going to be the first player into Barry Judge's book here. Yes, look, at he, he kicked at him as he was about to pick it up. I think it's fair enough as a, a yellow card, all right. Uh, but from a Fermanagh perspective, that was the first really tight press that we put yeah. on and ended up being successful. It wasn't one of those hard halves press where I stand five yards off yeah. my man and hope that I it's not kicked to him sort of thing. That was one where we were determined to get to the ball no matter where it went. So Connell Jones just down getting a bit of attention here. Ryan Jones has the ball here. 
Barry Judge is saying to get moving on. So Ryan Jones is going to have to take this. He's halfway between the 45 and 65 metre line. He's looking for support. Probably going to be yes. Connell who gets it. Yes, Connell who has recovered. Free in again for Fermanagh. That was Lauren Kenny who was ruled to have pushed Connell Jones. Um. So away we go anyway and it's... Uh, Ryan Jones outside the 65 metre line gives it over to Declan McCusker. He sprays it over there now, and I would imagine that's Brandon Horn. I mean, one of the one one of the aspects of the Fermanagh attacking play has been their over and back to keep keep width into the game, Peter. Yes, to um, try and stretch the long for defence. But there's a good run. I, I would most prefer to see the, the Ryan Lyons right footed hitting that in. Ah, oh, it comes off the post. That's unlucky. That was unlucky. That was a, a fairly good attack where he had a few options on him and not. What I was going to say there was the, the cut and move. From Anna players are coming straight across instead of cutting at a yeah. slight angle, which would take you by the defender if he was there. Short kick out, which from Anna have oh. uh, thought they'd turned over. Yeah. It was, there was a coming together there between the Longford player and Ryan Jones and referee Barry Judge says that Ryan Jones fouled the Longford uh, wing half forward and Longford have the free. It's coming over now into the midfield. It's their corner back. That's Barry O'Farrell. He gives it to Michael Quinn and this is a player we don't want to be delivering the ball. If Yes, you can see as well, Kieran. Every time he gets the ball, he's looking up to, to yeah. deliver it long. Now... The play goes on ahead, it's Patrick Fox here now, and it comes to Keelan, Keelan McGann. Now, as Fermanagh have got up their defensive screen, yeah, their defensive uh, and, screen. And Mickey it's Quinn sits back like a quarterback in American football. He does. He, available for the pass, and he... he yeah, but Ryan Jones was watching him tight there now, the ball mm. has come to the full back, he's Andrew Farrell, goes to ground, and it's continued as Longford still have it, just outside the 45 metre line. It's Barry O'Farrell, he fisting it forward to Owen Kenny, gets a good play off to Earl O'Sullivan, three from Anna players there, O'Sullivan goes to ground from Anna, are looking to bottle him up there, referee says that he took too many steps, and now from Anna, good turnover there, it Peter, because good. they just waited until Earl O'Sullivan had lost his bounce and then they pounced on him. Yes, there were plenty there, um, and then once he, once he lost control of the ball, as I suppose you'd call it, um, they got three men around him, and then were very careful not to foul. No, that was good play, and there's been some aspects of our tackling and our, our marking and our tracking and that that has been better than it had been in the first two games, I feel. With, with 28 minutes gone in the first half, Peter Fermanagh, three points behind, five points to the two points coming from Sean Quigley from Freeze. A couple of scores before half time, and you'd be reasonably happy here because we've seen how Longford took those freeze or took those, those some of those scores from play with the breeze in this first half. So you'd be hoping that Fermanagh can open up the shoulders a bit in the second half. Yeah, I'd be reasonably comfortable at this stage, Kieran, even with the score at, at two or three points of a gap. Um, now, having said that, I just hope that we don't go out in the second half then and think that the wind is going to win first. Yeah. Uh, Declan McCusker was under pressure there. He tries to give that ball back, and oh. he, it's a, that's an awkward looking foul. He was lucky to get away without a card, Peter, I would he think. He was lucky to get away without a black card, uh, yeah. the way he shaped at it. Oh, Good brilliant. tackling from Sean Quigley. He taps the ball out of the hands of Mickey Quinn. Now he has it, gives it back to Ray and Jones and Fermanagh have turned over that Longford attack. It's Ray and Jones between his own 45 and 65 metre line, gives it to Connell in and around midfield. And Fermanagh, as we say, retaining possession here now. Come over there to Josh Largo Ellis and back to James McMahon as well. Now Brandon Horn has found himself in a bit of space here. I would, quite a lot of Fermanagh players are finding themselves in space. Like I wonder at L Longford they probably are doing the zonal marking as opposed yes, to the man for man. It's space at outside 45. Josh Largo Ellis inside the D. He was looking to try and find James McMahon or Sean Quigley. Probably hurried the pass there, Peter. I don't know. I'm not sure. His 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 the picture that he had in his head wasn't the picture that the rest of us were seeing. Um, and it was unfortunate because it was a good break. Now, Longford have it on their own 45 metre line and it's come to the corner back. That's Aunt Barry O'Farrell. Now it comes to Irla, or it comes to Joseph Hagen here. Now it's Irla Sullivan. He spins away from the challenge. He gets inside there from on a 45 metre line. He fists the ball forward to Mickey Quinn. He finds the wing, the corner back well. Now it's fisted across the field. Danger here now, Peter, but the ball has been hit away. Decton McCusker, was that? He's trying to fly. Hack at that now. Longford still have it on the 21 metre line. Number 10, that is Keelan McGann. He hits that ball in. 
Oh. I think I'll give all the credit there to Ryan Jones. Ryan yeah. Jones got back and flicked it back over his head out while the, the long foot forwards were, were like, like we've seen the kill coup man do in yes uh, yes yeah. exactly it was a goal it was a goal all over yeah. and Ryan did great work to get his hand to it I mean uh, from from the Longford perspective it was Mickey Quinn who found um, he found Patrick Fox in the space there now yes. yellow card Look, Mickey for Quinn is vital to them yeah. in terms of uh, setting things up um, he, he's a good defender as well uh, but he's the player that is the standout for, for Longford Connell Jones just picked up a yellow card there I don't not sure what for but it's a yellow card for many with that ball now D- Dara McGowan was looking to fist that now it's come to Longford have picked up the break it's Jason Matthews left footed hitting that in Keane Newman says to keep it in play and well he might because he's got a lot of Fermanagh support there that's Declan McCusker along with him Luke Flanagan's there too and so is Connell Jones Jones taking it on this side of the field cutting back inside he's got Ryan Jones there as well as Fermanagh scoreline still 5 points Longford 2 points to Fermanagh, 31 and a half minutes played here in the first half in Glennon Brothers Pierce Park. The wind seems to have died ever so slightly, Peter, but it's probably still there and still swirling as Fermanagh on that far side of the field. That's Aidan Breen. He's got Kieran Corrigan there in support and now Sean Quigley between the 45 and 65 metre line. Ryan Jones is there as well. Quigley tries a quick hand pass to Ryan Jones. He's booming forward, right footed, and that ball has now screwed away to the right hand side of the post. It's virtually impossible to score from outside the 20 metre line into those goals that from are shooting at the minute. But um, I hadn't, no. seen, hadn't seen the wind draw the ball away to that side of the post yeah, either. Yeah, well it just it just stopped it. Um, Kick out now that bounced off the chest of the Longford midfielder and Fermanagh have overturned it. They had three players in right there now. It's Connell Jones coming down the sideline. He has Dara McGorn in front of him. He turns back. Ryan Jones is there and so is Josh Largo Ellis. So Connell Jones decides to hold the play. Now it comes over to Luke Flanagan over there under the far side of the field and then Declan McCusker as well getting inside the 65 metre line for Fermanagh. Ryan Lyons is over there. He finds James McMahon with a bit of space to go through. McMahon fisting it <coughs> to Sean Quigley and back now to Ryan Lyons. Going to shoot the left footy kicker. Hits a shot in. That's looking good, Peter, and that's over the bar. That's, that's the first point from play for Fermanagh. It goes to Ryan Lyons and with 32, approaching 33 minutes played, it's now Fermanagh. Three points, Longford five. Yes, well, just coming up approaching half time. That was a great score from Fermanagh and a great score from Ryan Lyons. But the press on the kick out, uh, we have conceded the kick out again. Mickey and Quinn Mickey gets the Quinn, ball. In his he hand. finds a good ball over there, and it's Mark Hughes now. He fists the ball over to Jason Matthews, and Matthews left footed, chipping that ball in, and that's going over the bar. So Longford with an immediate score. We seen that earlier on in the game. I think from Man, I got the first score. Longford went straight up the field, got a replay to it, opens out that three point lead again. Longford six, Fermana three. I'd be a bit disappointed with that now because look at we, we had players in a position to press the kick out. We we allowed a free catch in the middle of the field. Mickey Quinn got on the ball then, and there was acres of space inside. Good ball in, and a kick over the bar. And three kicks, they had the ball over the bar. Um, Fermanagh so do well from their own kick out as they engineer a, sh- uh, w- w- a kick out over the far side of the field, and now it's Josh Largo Ellis booming up that far side. He's got okay. support. I think it's Kieran Corrigan there as well. Corrigan hugging the touchline. He's been met by Andrew Farrell. He's going towards the corner. He's going to have to get rid of the ball because he gets around one challenge, goes to ground. Now it comes over here to Gary McKenna. McKenna giving it. He's solo on the ball just outside the edge of the D, and it's now in the hands of. Ryan Jones over there. I don't, I'm not. Sure, I'm sure our listeners could hear that there. There's one additional minute at the end of the first half here as Fermanagh looking for another score. It's Sean Quigley, he's chipping that. That's an inviting ball, I would call that, for Connell Jones. Getting inside the 21 mid line, he's going to probably want to swing it back onto the right foot. Shooting opportunity decides not to take it, gives it to Brandon Horn. Back to James McMahon here now as well. And back over to Ryan Lyons. Ryan Jones, Connell Jones had a bit of space there now. It's Sean Quigley. Ah, mm, he was trying to find Aidan Breen. As <laughs> Longford, that ball is that attack now has fizzled out, and Longford have it on the far side of the field. It's the corner back. That's Patrick Fox coming over here now to the midfielder, who's Darren Gallagher getting inside the Fermanagh 65 mid line. Gets away from the challenge of Aidan Breen. Over there, he's got Oren Kenny looking to find Oren Kenny on the 21 mid line. Kenny. Back to Darren Gallagher as well. He's going to hit a right-footed shot, hitting that in. Plenty of space on it. And 
quite possibly the two best scores we've seen so far have come from the boot of Darren Gallagher, Peter. Right, and two, a couple of the worst uh, giveaways or throwaways yeah. uh, have been from our forward line. Yeah. Um, that, you know, the, the, playing the, the ball to somebody who wasn't there. Okay, so he might have been there a moment ago when they last saw or took a look around him, but to, to give the ball away so cheaply now is not, uh, is not what we want. Seven points to three as we're halfway into additional time here at the end of this first half. Four points between the teams. Kean Newman coming towards midfield. It's almost a dangerous looking ball which it's been ruled as a it's been ruled as a mark. I'm not sure about that Peter. I'm not in, uh, yes. I think Barry Judge is, he kinda lost the run there because he blew for a mark and I don't think it was a mark and a lot of players kind of stopped, apart from Kieran Corrigan, who was well, tackling. The long, players, the long foot players stopped and accepted that it was a mark, and the Fermanagh players reckoned it wasn't. Uh, one of them went to try and take the ball off Mickey Quinn and got a... Yeah, it's Kieran Corrigan who's down. Now, um, it would be interesting to see what Barry Jones exactly. does about this now. I was just going to yeah. say that. What is, what is he going to do now? I mean, that, that's 36 and a half minutes played in the first half, so he's probably going to have to give a card to... And if he's going to have to give a card to anyone, it's going to have to be to Mickey Quinn, because it was Mickey Quinn who pushed Kieran Corrigan off it there. It certainly was, and he's he has called Mickey Quinn towards him. Now, I'm not sure if he will also penalise uh, Kieran Corrigan, uh, in that he, he started the... Mm. the in front. Bit of well, uh, Mickey Quinn kind of played on as well. It's not that he was waiting for to take his to take his kick from the mark. So as Barry Judge is talking to Mickey Quinn, he gives well, him a red card. Well, look at he did swing his arm. Yeah, I didn't think he made the direct contact, yeah. and it wasn't. Now he's going to talk to Kieran Corrigan as well. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd I mean, will. the Longford, the Longford management are incensed at that call it's one of their best players Mickey Quinn who has been sent off a straight red card now as referee Barry Judge he's going to throw the ball up so a double a double penalty that's a big for, whammy for Longford. For, for Longford there Peter well let's not get too upset about it no <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will still sleep tonight won't we um, what part of it was created too by the referee Blowing his whistle. I mean, if it was a mark, he could have blew his whistle a couple of other, t you know, to stop the play because it kind of the the play kind of developed in front of referee Barry Judge and it kind of forced him to have to give that red card. So now as Longford are trying to get a score before half time, they have a mark in there. Uh, I can't do that. Yeah, that was Jason Matthews. He kind of stopped, called for his mark. He's going to hit the ball left footed. Chipping that ball in, and that's gone over the bar now. It opens up the lead to eight points to three. Yes, 38 well and a half minutes played, Peter. As And now it's half time. Well, uh, uh, There was a lot of action in the last two minutes there. <laughs> yes, <laughs> a lot to yes, talk about. Um, and I'm not sure if the referee got all the calls right. Yeah. Um, from well, a Longford point of view, they'll be desperately disappointed at Mickey yeah. Quinn. But having said that, when he was, when Kieran Corrigan was trying to get the ball off him, yeah. he did swing at him. Oh, it was a red... Uh, there was there's definitely grounds for a red card, for a red card to have been given. I think the, on, on for, for the Longford, their, their biggest grievance will probably be that referee Barry Judge blew for a mark and then didn't enforce it. Didn't enforce yes, it. Yes, he probably should have thrown another to few times to, to yeah. make sure that people yeah. understood. He kind of just stood there and mm. watched it developing. Yeah. Well, look at overall, up until those last couple of points that uh, Longford have got, I'd have been more than happy with the scoreline. Not necessarily all the stuff that was... Uh, yeah. Not all the stuff that Fermana did, uh, giving the ball away particularly. Uh, cheaply, very cheaply. Um, Longford would be pleased with some of the scores that they got. And knowing that they were four or five points ahead, going into it, face that breeze, they have someone to cling on to. Yeah. Uh, but I suppose, look at it, a bit like the, the, Wicklow, the Wicklow game. Um, that's a seven or eight point breeze. Like We're, we're still very much in this game. Um, but what, what does the referee do now? Any slight challenge from a uh, yeah. I was going to say a slave player there. I hope it's not either of the players, <laughs> yeah. but from a Fermanagh player, um, he, he, he might just even things up, but we'll have to see. No, look, at, we're, I, I think Fermanagh are in a reasonable position at the minute. Um, 
I'd have preferred it to ha- if Longford hadn't got those last two points. Now, the game from Fermanagh's from point of view is going to be totally different now. It's going to be defend, attack as quickly as yeah. we can. With Deliver kicks. the ball as well. Yeah, with kicks. Um, so, with that, we'll leave it at half time here in this Alliance Football League Division 3 Round 4 game. Longford, 8 points, Fermanagh 3 on Fermanagh GA TV in association with our sponsors, Monaghan Brothers. We'll be back for what's going to be an interesting second half here in Glennon Brothers Pierce Park. I will talk to you then.
and we're back here in Glennon Brothers Pierce Park for the second half of this game. Ball's just been thrown in and Fermanagh have won it. It's Ryan Jones on the 21 metre line. There's one change to the Fermanagh team at half time. Number 21, Garvin Jones replaces Luke Flanagan as Fermanagh look to cut into this 8 points to 3 deficit. It's over there. It's Kieran Corrigan, right footed shot outside the 21 metre line. He gets a good connection with that ball and it has gone wide. Right, that would have been just a... It would have been a great a tonic to start off, Peter. Yes, that would have been the start of a man I wanted. Uh, but Brandon Horn again, he caught that kick out clean. I thought in the Wicklow game and in the first half today, Brandon Horn has... Uh, he's easing himself into county player. Yeah. He looks much more like a county player now than he did uh, a month or so ago. And the free for mana player seems to be Ryan Jones. As that kick out is... Uh, that kick out gets caught in the breeze and it was uh, Sean Quigley was pulled down there by the Longford full back and now Fermanagh have a free which Ryan Jones has he's in the 45 metre line gets away from two challenges gives it to Brandon Horn a lot of fist passing in a tight area but now Connell Jones puts a bit of width to it over there now and it goes to Ryan Lanes he does a quick give and go with Josh Largo Ellis now it's Connell Jones 45 metres out too far to take a shot and not it's not now he's not a time to be taking the pot shots either Peter <coughs> Yes, so I suppose that's one of the worries that we would have that people would think they can score from anywhere. But of course, Ryan Jones really he can, can't score he from can anywhere because he was just <laughs> he was thirty-five meters out there. Ryan Jones coming off the right foot, off the shoulder, and a good point over the bar. So that's another score for Fermanagh. It's now eight points to Longford, four points to Fermanagh, and Fermanagh get the first score inside a minute and a half at the start of this second half. And goalkeeper now Paddy Collum. Be interesting to see how he gets on with his kickouts, Peter. He's yes. What we want to do now is we want to press this kickout yeah. and make it very difficult for them to get it out. It and it was the break that we were missing in the first half. Mm, um, lost that first break now as Longford turned that over. Uh, it was the ball kind of pulled back uh, in the breeze and Longford have that now. They're away to that far side of the field. I think that's one of the that's the midfielder. He's Ryan Moffat and now away Longford go coming back into midfield. We seen with Fermanagh in that first half they had long periods of possession because it wasn't a time for shooting. So Longford now they're probably going to do something similar as goalkeeper Paddy Collum finds himself in midfield, gives the ball over now to number 12 Joseph Hagen and back to Collum again. So Paddy Collum, he's going towards the Fermanagh 45 metre line. He hits that ball in low, it goes to Jason Matthews and now this is a goal scoring opportunity now and Keane Newman does well, the ball was hit straight at him but Keane Newman still had to stop him. Keelan McGann come off the shoulder and he was bearing down on goal. Kean Newman come out, closed down the angles, made himself big, made the save, gone out for a 45, Peter, and that's a bit of danger that uh, for, for that Kean Newman has seen pass. Right, well, I would be very, very complimentary of the goalkeeper, Paddy Collum, for, for the way that he was involved in that attack. Uh, I suppose it's another string in the goalkeeper's bow mm -hmm. now. Like he, was, he was 30, 40 yards out from Fermanagh goals when he played the ball into the full forward, uh, number 15, Oren Kenny. Um, and look, we were looking not to concede a goal there. It was yeah. a great save by Kean Newman. Uh, whether he kicked it straight at him or not, Kean had to be there. Mm -hmm. um, now this this is the good free taker, the midfielder. This is Darren Gallagher. Darren Gallagher. Who's, uh, he's got two points so far. Two wonderful points from play. So this is a 45. It's about three or four metres to the left-hand side of the post and Darren Gallagher gets a good connection but the breeze is going to catch that there it's rolling in there and it's been it's spilling around in there and it's been picked up by a Longford player that's uh, Joseph Hagen comes over now to Kenny and out to Desi Reynolds so Longford still have it now here is uh, Mark Hughes who got a couple of good scores in the first half and now it's over there again with Joseph Hagen so Longford still have it in and around the 21 metre line there's three from Anna players in there, Josh, Lo Josh Largo Ellis is one of them, Aidan Brains and others they look to battle up the uh, Joseph Hagen and he's just had to kick the ball away eventually, ball was has been turned over now and it's Mark Hughes and Longford still have it and they're bearing down on goal, there's danger here Peter and that's the full back and the ball's ended up going wide Oh, Right okay, uh, there was a ball at the side of the goals, that it looked like it had spun yeah, in the net, it, yeah. that caused us a bit of problems there but there were two or three occasions out on the corner there where Fermanagh had a chance to get a hand on the ball yeah. and didn't get it and it, it nearly left them with the opportunity for a goal. 
and business has picked up here now because it's eight points to Longford, four points to Fermanagh. You just heard a, a, a shout from the crowd as there's a lot to play for in this second half now. Josh Largo Ellis is bearing down on that far side of the field. He's got Ryan Lyons with him as well. Josh Largo Ellis gives it indeed to Sean Quigley who's over there. Is he going to take a shot? He rolls it along the ground to Connell Jones. There's a good. chance to Sean Quigley here. Going down a goal. There's a goal chance here for Fermanagh. Yeah. Sean Quigley gets into the net. Eight points to Fermanagh, one eight to Longford. It was good interchange play between Sean Quigley and Connell Jones. Quigley rolled the ball down to Connell Jones, continued his run straight through the Longford defence, and he got it back from Connell Jones into the net. First goal of the game, Peter goes to Sean Quigley, and yeah. it's game on. Yes, and funny enough, uh, maybe what happened to us in the previous couple of games was that we didn't have the right men on the ball in the right place, and that certainly between Connell Jones and Sean. Uh, it was a great ball in from from uh, Conal Jones that set Sean up. Yeah. So the oh. kick the kick out now. Longford have it. They're nursing a one point lead here now with uh, five approaching six minutes gone in the second half. Probably seen just going back to the Sean Quigley Connell Jones attack, and we've probably seen that against Wicklow, Peter. That when Connell Jones was introduced to the game, I mean, Fermanagh got two goals in that game, and there was an improvement in their attacking play. But just speaking of attacking play, Longford a good opportunity here now. That was well done by James McMahon. He intercepted the ball that Jason Matthews was trying to find. McMahon is when Fermanagh are going going back into defence, James McMahon seems to be the spare man from the Longford kick out, Ray and Jones is mostly spare in that there, so Fermanagh are trying to interchange that there, Peter. Well, remember they have a they have a, a free man now, so it, it must be James McMahon most of the time, um, but that was very, very well done. Um, it was a short ball that Longford played and James was able to... Oh, good ball in here now to Sean Quigley, he's got another opportunity, he's trying to get away, he's going to hit a right-footed shot again and he's found another goal! Another goal for Sean Quigley. It was the ball in from Ryan Lyons. Just found Sean Quigley. He was just edging away from the shoulder of the Longford defender. And uh, that was Andrew Ford. That's the second goal for Sean Quigley, Peter. And now it's Fermanagh 2-4. Longford 8 points. Right, well we complimented uh, Longford in the first half, Mickey Quinnan especially, who is no longer with us, yeah. um, for He's the long ball. He's just not playing. Well, sorry, <laughs> uh, the long ball that he was playing in, and that was, I think it was Ryan Jones kicked it in, and it was the perfect ball. In fact, Sean could have taken the mark. Yeah. Remember in the first half, That's right. they had that an incident it. like that, that is it. Uh, yeah. where um, they, their forward caught the ball, and he elected to take the mark, where he was in one-on-one -on, -one on the keeper nearly. And that's two goals for Sean Quigley here now. Ryan Lyons or Ryan Jones does well to win that mark. Gives it to Kieran Carrigan. Back to Sean Quigley as well. Quigley left-footed shot, hitting that ball in, and it's gone over the bar. He had players going. He had Aidan Breen and maybe Connell Jones in support, but he took it himself, and it's now a uh, two-three. I make it that Sean Quigley has scored one point for Ryan Lyons and one point for Ryan Jones. Well, if you we were wondering in the first at half time what effect the breeze was going to have, but if you've got a kicker of the ball as young quickly, the breeze is a, is going to pay, make a big difference. Um, two goal, so two goals and two points, two goals and a point for Mana have scored in this uh, second half here now. So it's been a real purple patch for them. Three points between the teams. For Mana's up ahead here as there's eight minutes gone, and now it's Longford going down that far side of the field. It's one of their defenders as Patrick Fox. He gives it to Danny, Desi Reynolds, hitting that ball in, and that's gone in and gone wide. It was a kind of a hit and hope. Um, and it's another wide for yes, it, Longford. It, it was very much a hit and hope. Um, Fermanagh might have had one or two of those in the first half. Uh, but now we want to settle it down and just make sure that we yeah. complete the kick out. Kick outs have been a problem for us, actually. I'd love to see the stats for the kick outs uh, because Longford are probably winning them nearly two to one. So that kick out in that instance, it was Josh Largo Ellis was the free man and he took the short kick out from goalkeeper Kean Newman. Now it's in the hands of Kean Carrigan. He gives it to Garvin Jones, gets away from the challenge of um, the Longford attacker. That's Keelan McGann. Now Fermanagh still have it. It's Aidan Breen. He probably has a shooting opportunity right footed. Gets a lot of height to that there and the breeze takes it. It's not going to take it back in though. No. So that's another wide for Fermanagh. 2 8. To two five to Fermanagh eight points to Longford, and that was a scoring opportunity in but, that instance. But it's unbelievable how s easy it is for Fermanagh to get themselves into a position where yeah. they can shoot from. Yeah. In the first half, you w we were talking about them width and across and back and across and back. Now it's a couple of passes, and so if we get the shooters on the ball, um, th they'll be able to complete. 
So goalkeeper Paddy Collum here. Let's see his kick out. He hits it short to Desi Reynolds, and Desi Reynolds wins a free. Uh, it's now in, into the hands of um, Andrew Farrell, and he's going to find Patrick Fox. So Longford have it here now. Fox getting away from Ryan Lyons, but he's Dara McGordon in front of him now, and it's back to the wing half forward who's Keelan McCann. So now Longford, if been knocked for six really there Peter two goals and a point inside a couple of minutes and that but oh, that attack has broken down and Garvin Jones does well to intercept it he was been pulled back but still has it now it's Gary McKenna to Connell Jones first time ball to Sean Quigley it's bouncing in there fact bounce is going to go over the bar which it has I suppose it was an awkward one for it the breeze took that ball back in and it just bounced about seven meters in front of Paddy Collum he was too far out he was too, he was too far back to take catch and it just bounced over the bar so that's another point for Connell Jones yes and I tell you what you know you're in trouble when the ball's bouncing over the bar on you yeah. um, like Sean Quigley the ball didn't get to Sean Quigley you thought that's that's yeah. long for saying that well not so bad but in fact then it went over the bar maybe gives us another indication of what the breeze is like uh, from Anna turned that ball over they turned it over because Longford felt forced to kick a pass and the pass was never on. Garvin Jones did particularly well actually to, to get out in front. That's and here's pressure on the yeah, kick again. Yeah, caught in the breeze again, so that was Darren McGurn gives it to Sean Quigley. He's over inside the 21, good, great pass to Aidan Breen on the 13 metre line now. And it's back out to Darren McGurn. Had a shooting chance, doesn't have to take it, but he does. Puts plenty of height into it, it's going to land in around the 13 metre line. Swirling away around there and Garvin Jones can't get on it. Now it's goalkeeper Paddy Collum who has that there and Longford are able to get away from that, um, get away from that challenge. So as Paddy Collum is coming outside the 21 Gary McKenna does well to get a hand in referee says he was fouled well that's what I would fear that shot from Darren McCorn I don't know what he was hoping to do score from somewhere yeah. difficult position maybe he was under a wee bit of pressure but if we drop into that sort of mentality false, false hope yeah. uh, instead of kicking with purpose kicking with hope Kieran Corrigan's doing well to break inside. He's tackled by the full back. Now it comes to Declan McCusker and back to Garvin Jones. Back to Ryan Jones, 30, 20, 21 metres out, chipping that ball in. Straight over the black spot. And it's another point to Fermanagh. 2 7 to Fermanagh now. 8 points to Longford. That's the second point for Ryan Jones. It's just it's the, it's the difference in Darren McGorn that he probably took a, ch a shot from an area where he didn't have to, whereas Ryan Jones was in the. Yes, Ryan, Ryan, position. Ryan Jones knew he could score. He scored from there many times in the past. So it, it, was a, a, it was more of a measured shot as well. But we don't want to be getting complacent here. There's not that. Yeah. There's only about 12 minutes gone in the half. A goal for, for Longford. And that, that, turn, that swing with uh, Kean Newman's save. save yeah, and suddenly we get two yeah. goals. Yeah. No, uh, nine. nine point swing. Well, Longford are going on a foray up the team but a handling error has took a bit of momentum out and now they have it it's again with the wing half forward who's Joseph Hagen as Longford are still looking for their first score in the second half here now it's Keelan McGann he's getting away from two from Anna players uh, uh, that was Oren Kenny goes to ground in front of him and McGann looked at nice chip ball into try and find one of the Longford attackers he has it he's on the end line though so it's awkward comes back outside here now to Oren Kenny and Kenny thought he just was going to take a shot Declan McCusker's in front of him Maiden Breen's there as well now gets away from the two from Anna players that's the left footed ball going across Desi Reynolds keeps it in mm. I don't know well the umpire says it yeah, I, doubt I, anyway yeah, it's, it's, it's feet were definitely out I don't know whether Owen Kennedy was try or Kenny was trying to, to score a point at that stage or trying to float the ball in, um, but it, it ended up it ended up as neither. Mm -hmm. um, but we can see the pattern that we we were nearly complaining about in the first half about how slow Fermanagh's build up was, how we allowed them time to get sweepers in place, and the kick was never really on. But but it had a lot to do with the wind. Um, and Longford are seeing that now. Oh, Jesus. That was off the ground. I would think it was off the ground anyway. So, from that was a short kick out. We'll not say who it was, but it was uh, uh, Fermanagh got away with that one anyway. So now, Declan McCusker has it, giving it over here to Ryan Jones and Kieran Corrigan's in there as well. So, Corrigan, Sean Quigley's making a run, going to chip the ball in front of him. Not a great ball, but Quigley, he got a hand to it, and the Longford defender, to be fair to him, did well. Ray, Gavin, Garvin Jones has it now. 
and referee Barry Judge has just blown his whistle. Sean quickly. He looks to be in trouble. He now. looks to be in trouble. Uh, As in, he, he's down receiving medical attention. Um, he went to pick that ball up and it could have been a, a, a coming together of uh, the legs. I, I'm not sure. It bounced awkwardly. Maybe he twisted his ankle. Um, yeah. But he, he, he's in, see, he's see. on his knees. He remained on his knees. Um, just just to, the ball that was played into him was by Cian Corrigan. Cian Corrigan has touched as much ball. His face, is it? Uh, I was going to say that Cian Corrigan has, has touched nearly as much ball in the first 10, 15 minutes of this half than he did in the whole of the other half. Yeah. Because it wasn't a half for somebody like him who roams about, gets himself into space, invites, invites yeah. good ball, invites ball all the time. Um, whereas... In the first half, he just couldn't. He couldn't get on the ball. That being said, Kieran Corrigan's ball into Sean Quigley wasn't the best ball because Quigley had to go down and bend his back. It was a. It was well set up for the one bounce in front. So it seems as if it's going to be a blood substitution. I see the referee making a T sign. So that's a, a temporary substitution on the for team. It, it could be a facial injury. Maybe an elbow or something just happened to clash clash into Sean Quigley there, but. Um, I think it does. It doesn't seem as if it's a, a, a leg injury then, which I kind of we initially thought. Right, but it looks like he, the referee is insisting that he leaves the field because of blood. So uh, there is going to be a blood substitution. So Fermanagh are going to have to take on a blood, which we think is going to be number twenty, um, Danny Leonard. But we're going to just wait and make sure that that's what happens. So it is going. The play will continue. It's Ryan Jones has the ball midway between the um, 45 and 65, and indeed it is Danny Leonard who comes on as a temporary substitute for Sean Quigley as Sean Quigley goes down. He's walking off anyway. Now that's come to Garvin or it's come to Gary McKenna. Went through his hands and Longford now with an opportunity to break over there. They have it in the hands of their midfielder, who's Ryan Moffat, now the full the, the, uh, cornerback, who's Patrick Fox. And now, as Longford Danny are going down to the straight, the heart of the Fermanagh defence, it's 1v1 in there. It's Jason Matthews up against Garrett, uh, Garrett Kavna. Ah. Matthews hits an awful ball out, which Gary McKenna can intercept. And if he can get the ball up quickly, Darren McGoran's in a lot of space. Garvin Jones has gone down as fast as he can. McGordon, he's got um, Gary McKenna there as well, giving it over here to Connell Jones, Aidan Breen's there as well, Jones right footed, giving that ball plenty of height, and it's not going to come back inside, and that really was an opportunity where Fermanagh could have got a score. Yes, and that was a classic counter-attack, and there was a terrible Substitution ball. Substitution on the Lamford side, number 22, Jack Duggan, it's number 15, Oren Kenny. So... A lot of changes going on here now in number 22, Jack Duggan. We just heard it replacing number 15, Oren Kenny. We think we've got confirmation that it's a lip injury for uh, Sean Quigley, so that would explain why there was a bit of blood. So he'll be have to get that stitched up maybe or get the stem the bleeding anyway. As the breeze picks up and it's just blown the door open on the press box here as well. That's an indication of how strong it is. That ball's been fisted over to Danny Leonard on the far side of the field. He's given it to Gary McKenna who gives it to... He was trying to find Aidan Breen. Um, and Longford have cut that out. So away they go and it's Longford now coming down this side of the field. It's in the hands of their uh, defender who's Patrick Fox. And now it comes again then to number 21, the new man. That is... Um, Owen McCormick, he came on to replace number five, James Mourne. And that Longford still have it. Desi Reynolds trying to find Patrick Fox. Good pressure from Declan McCusker. He tries to get the ball away. Soccer style. McCusker gets the ball. Picked up eventually. He's got two Longford players around him. He's under a lot of pressure. Referee says he overcarried it. Just couldn't get the ball picked up clean in that instance. No, uh, he had done very well to get it out of the ruck. And then, then by the time he went to pick it up, he was the player was on top of him. Yeah. Um, so now Longford have it, there's, uh, there's uh, five points between the teams here now, that's Jack Duggan over out to Dara Doherty, he came on as well, and then it's Darren Gallagher right footed, he got two great points in the first half and now that's another one in the second half, three points for um, Darren Gallagher, all of them from play Peter, that one most notably against the Breeze. Well that one was by far and away the best one, um, and that, that's us, we're back to the giving the ball away now. Um, almost a little bit 
casual in our play. We are four, we were five points ahead. Now it's four. Uh, now it's four, and a goal. For As example, you say, a goal for Longford would be. Yeah, so we need we need to keep pushing on and making sure that we get the scores from the possession that we have in there, inside their 30, 40 yard line. Nineteen and a half minutes played in the second half in this Allianz National League Division Three Round Four game on from GEA TV in association with the sponsors Monaghan Brothers. As the play is over on the far side of the field, it's Connell Jones inside the. Longford 45 mid lane comes back to Kieran Corrigan and now it's Ryan Lyons as Fermanagh retain possession it's Brandon Horn he's starting to go towards the Longford 45 and it comes then to Ryan Jones without D- Dara McGurn seems to have moved into full forward when now that Sean Quigley's off Peter as a as a marquee forward now it comes to Ryan Lyons a good run he was tackled well by Darren Gallagher now Longford have it overturned and now we'll see what they are like on the break it's the midfielder Ryan Moffat Garvin Jones good, putting good trying to put pressure on that there he stops the Longford player who's Darren Gallagher referee Barry Judge blows his whistle um, he's probably going to book him alright probably going to um, book him yeah I don't think it was as bad a challenge as Darren Gallagher's making out now he rolled over a lot of times there but it is going to be a yellow card, I would think, for Garvin Jones. Um, Indeed it is, it's a yellow card. Yeah, some of the Longford supporters aren't that happy, but I suppose, what can you do? Um, well, they're looking to get someone sent off, I suppose, because it, let's not forget it's still 15 from Fermanagh, plays 14 from Longford after uh, Mickey Quinn got that yellow card just before the half time. Um, just, just a bit disappointed now since from since well maybe it's from Sean Quigley went off. He he was a good target inside yeah. and he was moving. Looks as if he's coming back on though. That's not so bad because I felt there that Ryan Jones just he didn't see anybody moving so he didn't kick it in and then suddenly we're into a bit of a uh, play around the field and ended up losing the ball. Um, well, so w- when Fermanagh have the breeze, I mean that's the time for them to be getting the ball in. Well, that's I suppose that's what the phrase target man came yeah. out of, um, but. The target man, not like in the old days, the target man doesn't stand on the edge of the square and have a high ball kicked into him. He has to make moves yeah. and he has to make them at the right time and Sean Quigley can do that. Um. So, it seems as if they've got Sean Quigley patched up here now and they're just looking to get that temporary substitution most likely changed. Uh, Darren Gallagher from uh, Longford is to his feet as well. It's going to be a free and it's in the hands of number 21 who is Owen McCormick. He's going to take it. Looking for options. Now Fermanagh are putting the press on especially with the extra man and it's the defender Patrick Fox under pressure from Danny Leonard but Longford have that free and now it comes here to Jason Matthews. He's got James McMahon in front of him and as well as that that's Darren Dara Doherty. Now Longford Oh, well Look, done. It's good interception by Declan McCusker and Garrett Calvin is in there as well. And now for Mana have that turned over. It's Kieran Corrigan running around. Kieran Corrigan running around the six-yard box gives it over then to Gary McKenna. Had to come back. McKenna looking to find Josh Largo Ellis. Just enough on it. And now Josh Largo Ellis he frees Ryan Lyons. And this is a good attacking opportunity for for Mana. Brandon Horns away up the field as well. They've carried it inside the 45 meter line. Now it's Dara McGorn. A good opportunity again. McGorn chance of another goal. Blocked down well and. It's been kept in and it's over there now. Ryan Lyons is in a pace race for it with one of the Longford defenders is Patrick Fox. It eventually goes out over the lane and it's a free in for Fermanagh. Was another goal scoring opportunity, Peter? It's, it was Darren McGorn that pulled the trigger. But well, I thought he should have played it square to Conan Jones who was free in the middle with nobody next or near him. Um, now so that's that's, that's that point I was making earlier on. Number 15, Sean Quigley, and now replaced number 13. So what Fermanagh have done now, Peter, sorry to cut across you, but they've made the on quickly, he's come back on and they've take, they've kept Danny Leonard on and they're taking off Gary McKenna. Right. So okay. sorry I cut across your point. No, 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 that's okay. Um, I just feel that Fermanagh now have, because they've got the two goals and they've got a couple of good scores, that it's now, it's uh, exhibition stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but what we need is, we need to make sure of the opportunities that we get, that we put them put them away. Not necessarily, point, keep the scoreboard ticking over. We've had uh, two or three chances now that have gone a begging from yeah. good work. That was a great break, yeah. and yet we got nothing from it. Pob- possibly too that it's just a bit of experience for Darren McGoran as well that um, you know to, to, to spot Connell Jones in the centre it's a, it can be a learning curve as well so 
Um, anyway, the kick out is coming. Garvin Jones has turned that over. He gives it to Connell Jones, and now it's back to Josh Largo Ellis as well. Now Ryan Jones scoring opportunity right footed. Took it first time. He had a bit more time that day than he thought. He probably had all right, and he, he actually didn't take the little quick squint. He went on where he felt he mm. was. He wasn't far away, but it no, no. still ended up wide. Yeah, I think if, as you say, if he had taken a moment longer and got his burns a bit better, he made he might have scored relatively easy and then again if he had been blocked down we'd have been complaining about the fact ah, that he, he took too long uh, yeah. so look at that that's the great thing about being on the sideline yeah. um, four points between the teams as the kick out comes long Brandon Horn's fighting for that in there and he gets the breaking ball now it's James McMahon and, and De- Declan McCusker over there 2-7 to Fermanagh nine points to Longford and after an initial fury Fr- Fermanagh have been quiet enough on the, on the scoring period they haven't got a score maybe in the last five ten minutes here now, possibly that was uh, that was connected to Sean Quigley not being on. Gives it back to Connell Jones, right footed, and well, I thought when you were saying that that it did it corresponds perfectly with Sean Quigley's yeah. absence because when he did come back on there, he was involved in that move again. He gave a nice pass to Connell Jones, chipped the ball over the bar. There's another point to Fermanagh, two eight. They're at now. Yes, uh, like it's not all about scoring. It's about making the right decision in the forward end when you have the ball, and and Sean Quigley can do that. So two eight to Fermanagh, nine points to Longford as that ball is break broken down. Danny Leonard gets it. It goes to Kieran Corrigan now as well, and Corrigan's going down. Ah. He's going towards the twenty one meter line. Gives it back to Ryan Lyons. Now it's coming over here to Connell Jones as well, heading towards the forty five. As Fermanagh have this. They have, it's 15 for Fermanagh, place 14 from Longford. Now it's Ryan Jones just outside the 45 metre line. He skirts around, gives it to Connell Jones as well. Sean Quigley's calling for it. Uh, at, at the back post, Garvin Jones had a shooting opportunity. He takes it now, but that's going to come wide on his own side. Right, and this is not, like we have said this, this is not what we want. Uh, Garvin thought he had a chance, he thought he was close enough and so on, so he just had a go, whereas in fact it wasn't It wasn't the best of chance. But I have to say, you'd uh, compliment Brandon Horn in the middle of the field over this last 10 minutes. It is he, he, on his own, single-handedly, he has stopped any clean catches by the Longford men. And now that and we're getting breaks, getting breaks, which Danny Leonard's after winning that there. That's also correspond, Peter. But I think the breeze seems to have picked up as well because that kick out from Paddy Collum, it got caught in the breeze, and then it's hard for the Longford players to judge it. And then the break just went to Danny Leonard. Now from on a have it, they're inside the 45 meter line. Ryan Jones is hitting that a great effort, and that's gone over the bar. And that's another point for Ryan Jones. He has three points here now, so it's from on a. Uh, Two nine Longford nine points and that opens lead out to nine or to six points as well, Peter. Yes, and it also emphasises the fact that we need to get shooters on the ball. Ryan Jones has scored three points. Sean Quigley has scored whatever, but those boys are liable to score more so liable to score than not. So can we get the ball to them and get them to kick it over the bar? Number fourteen, Jason. So 27 and t- t- nearly approaching 28 minutes played in the second half. Longford have made two more substitutions. They've took off Jason Matthews. They've took off Mark Hughes. Mark Hughes caused, got two points in that first half and caused from on a lot of trouble in the second half. He just couldn't get into the game. Now that's another kick out which Fermanagh have overturned. It's Dr McCusker. He's finding Connell Jones here and Garvin Jones is there as well. Fisting it back to Ryan Jones. And it's back to Garvin. Uh, I could nearly drop the second names because it's Ray and Connell to Garvin here now. It's going over to Dara McGordon outside the 45 metre line. Maybe Do a bit of from Anna. It's slowed up just a wee bit in there, attacking. Well, that's all right as long as they don't give it away. But there's not as much movement inside now from. Um, Josh Largo Ellis, another space over there as well. He's probably going to get the ball now from Ryan Lyon. So Josh Largo Ellis, 2v1 between him and Danny Leonard. S- error from Josh Largo Ellis. He solos that ball and gets away from him now. Longford opportunity to break out here. There's three Longford players going. And f- fortunately, I would say that the man carrying the ball is the most furthest Longford player forward. 
so he's getting inside the Fermanagh 13 metre line trying to fist the ball across James oh. McMahon does well to intercept that now uh, Aidan Breen has it and now it's an opportunity for Fermanagh to put a counter attack in it's Aidan Breen to Ryan Jones and Connell Jones is here as well 2-9 to Fermanagh, 9 points to Longford, uh, approaching 29 and a half minutes played in this second half. So it's Connell Jones inside the 45 metre line. He's only got Sean Quigley in there, but Danny Leonard's also in a bit of space on the far side if the ball could come as far to him. Now, Dara McGorn sells a dummy getting away. He's inside the 13 metre line. Shooting opportunity, I would say, chipping that ball in himself, right footed. It's just gone wide. He was right to take a shot anyway, Peter. No, 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 he was the right execution. to take a shot. He, he couldn't, Sean Quigley made a run, he couldn't get it to him. Um, the cornerback slipped and Dara went on. It's just he was coming in from the right-hand side on his right foot. Tough angle. And it was going to be a tight one. Um, but now, another kick out. It'll be interesting to see if Romana can stop this again. Because they've picked up, they have stopped free catches, they've caught a few clean balls and they have made a sure lot of breaks. That they've won a lot of breaks. See there again, the ball is caught in the breeze here now, and it was uh, it was certainly a free catch up from man of good opportunity to hear Connell Jones right footed shot hitting that in, mm, and it's gone wide, and that's um, well speaking from a midfielder's point of view, although I can hardly remember when it was, but underneath a ball against the breeze that's actually you think you're underneath it but it moves in about yeah. two or three meters and you're, you're stretching and reaching for it whereas the, the fellow who's coming in to break it he doesn't have to judge it just as well now that was a break which Longford won and uh, it's a free in for Longford and it's going to be taken and now it's come to the midfielder Darren Gallagher so Darren Gallagher has Brandon Horn in front of him Horn does well he kills the momentum of Darren Gallagher and now it's one of the substitutions who's come on and they've been bottled up by three from Anna players referees playing an advantage the ball's going to come it's going to no, come I back and it'll be a free mm. in for um, free in for Longford well funny this is something I dispute and you see it all the time he blew he put up his hand to signal a foul about 15 yards back yeah and then when he did give the foul it's he, he moved it's it forward yeah it's uh, well I think it was more so that he said the, the advantage was over and, and then he was blown for another foul. You're very sympathetic here. Quite possibly <laughs> am, but naive maybe, I don't well know. <laughs> to, that's a freeze gone o over anyway. Um, but I would have preferred to have seen the way that he refereed that actually. It was the second foul that was closer and was more punishing, but most referees bring it back to where the first yeah. foul occurred. Now, I don't know, I mean... Ah, Danny. Anyway, it's a uh, the it's it's a kick out which Fermanagh have won, and now it's come to Aidan Breen and Ryan Lyons as well on the Fermanagh on the edge of the D goes to James McMahon here two nine to Fermanagh. That's fifteen. 10 points to Longford, 5 points between the teams as Ryan Jones chips a lovely ball in front of Dara McGoran, one bounce in front of him, McGoran gets away from the challenge, he's gone down the heart of the the Longford defence, takes his shot and, and oh. he gets his point, so that's Dara McGoran onto the scoreboard as well, 2-10 to 10 points. Oh, he, did, he did very well there um, and it was a great ball, it was a, great ball a measured from, ball in from yeah. Ryan, Ryan Jones in the middle of the field. Um, Dara saw his opportunity. D D Longford defender put in a desperate block, but uh, Dara had got the ball away. Brandon Horn gets a hand of that there, and Danny Leonard trying to get the break. He's fouled by referee. Uh, he's fouled, and, and referee Barry Judge gives a free to Fermanagh, which has been taken quickly. And now that's one bounce in front of Kieran Corrigan. Shooting opportunity, Corrigan gives it over then to. Connell Jones gives that plenty of height and we'll see how f well does the breeze do. It's coming in, Paddy Collum had no one around him, he catches it and now Longford with 33 minutes gone in the second half. There's, I can't see anything for Longford, only they're going to need a couple of goals to, to get back in here. Well, one goal would sort of... Sort It'd make it nervous bright, anyway. Brighten it up for them. And here they're running through the middle Going of the straight here. down the middle, so it's Darren Gallagher. He's given it over here, and this is a goal scoring opportunity which has been fisted to the net. And that is the Longford number 17, Dylan Farrell. As Kia Newman comes out, Farrell just got a fist to that. And just as you said, Peter, one goal would make a difference. So it's now 2 10 to Fermanagh, 1 10 to Longford. And it suddenly it's le leaves scary it again. enough again, yes. Uh, from having been in a very comfortable position. We have had over the past, I don't know, 10 minutes, we've had three or four shots which have been very hopeful, mm -hmm. haven't either, they haven't scored them, um, 
and that one dropped into the keeper's arms and that's where that attack yeah. started so we want to be a bit more precious with our possession so Kian Newman from that kick out he goes long Dara McGorn comes flying Gavin Jones from Monica really do with a score here now Gavin Jones goes to ground he tries to get it away the ball has come out of his hands Peter McGinty's heads in his hands here as Longford turn over the ball they're coming outside their own 45 metre line three points between the teams mm. I thought the, the, the Fermanagh attackers had done good work now it's the goal scorer Dylan Farrell giving it over here now to the midfielder Ryan Moffat as Moffat gives it to um, Dara Doherty gets away from the challenge of Garrett Kavanagh and Doherty right footed it's gone wide Luckily enough, if the breeze wasn't as strong, I'd say that would have carried over the bar, Peter. Yes, but it, well, look at funny. We, we're talking about the breeze all day. It's nearly be easier to score a goal into those goals than it would be to score yeah. a point. So now, referee Barry Judge is going to have a word with his linesman. I think that's um, David Goff. So the officials having a discussion about something that has happened on the... Uh, I think maybe even something on the sideline here. There's as we're ticking into additional time, it's 35 and a half, a, 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 a half a minute of additional time has been played, and it seems as if referee Barry Judge is going to talk with the, um, he's going to talk with the Longford uh, Billy manager Lachlan Billy O'Loughlin. So referee Barry Judge, he's given a yellow card to um, Billy O'Loughlin, and. Now they're having a discussion with somebody else in the dugout. Somebody else in the dugout. Uh, right. Well, this is maybe taking a bit of the fire out of Longford's belly uh, at the moment. Uh, for Man, I need a chance to settle down and and get that get yeah. that next score. Um, they do need another score at this stage. To put the four Peter. points in it too. Yeah. Well, to settle me and you down a bit, I think they need another <laughs> score. <laughs> well, at, at half time, the scoreline read for Mana or Longford eight points for Mana three. Uh, I, I do believe two seven for Fermanagh in the second half. Longford have got one two. So a lot of talking going on. We can't see what's happening. It's all happening down below the the dugouts as referee Barry Judge goes back in to midfield. After all that, there. Um, it's going to be looks as if someone from Longford some of the Longford management has been sent away I don't know but it's going to be a kick out from Kean Newman he's going long Ryan Jones isn't a good opportunity to catch that Danny Leonard does well to catch the to take up the breaking ball he's under a lot of pressure but he gets the pass away and now from Anna have it with um, is Connell Jones over there he gives it to Garvin Jones Garvin Jones a bit of space this is a scoring opportunity right left footed ball hitting that in and it's gone over the bar and that is a score that from desperately needed 2-11 to Fermanagh 1-10 to Longford but, but I give a lot of credit for Danny Leonard since Danny, Danny Leonard has come in he has won 3 or 4 breaks which really which, which really have um, been significant uh, we weren't winning those in the first half uh, we weren't dominating ball in the middle of the field in the first half Danny Leonard done remarkably well there 37 and a half minutes gone here in the second half there will be five additional minutes was announced and maybe two of the minutes so far has already been taken up by a lot of that booking that went on so Longford have a, a, a free which has been moved forward to the from on a 65 meter line it's been given in here now to Joseph Hagen he gives it to the number 18 who is Aidan Maguire and Longford have it they're breaking forward it's their midfielder Darren Gallagher he's got uh, three points already his fist pass goes away and Fermanagh have intercepted that and it's Ryan Jones inside oh. his own 45 metre line he's probably heading towards the wrong goal line here but Fermanagh still have it with Kieran Corrigan I mean, from, they need to come out here. So Kieran Corrigan waits for the support from Aidan Breen. Brandon Horns in a lot of space in the 45 metre line. If Fermana can only get the pass away, it seems as if the referee's blowing his whistle for over carrying. Oh dear. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, no. Fermana did miss an opportunity well, to get that ball out. Yeah. So now Fermana are bringing on a substitution. They're bringing on Stephen McGullion and they're taking off 
Kieran Corrigan now Longford have an opportunity that from from uh, as the player was developing there Barry Judge seen that from on it I think he in, did indicate that it was over carried Darren Gallagher now has it he's on the 13 meter lane he's midway between the goals and the sideline so it's an all right angle for a right footed kicker strong breeze blowing against him so he's a lot of he's got a lot of measuring to do here to get this over going to take it out of his hands. Or is he going to take it off the ground? I beg your pardon. Yes, and he's going to go for it. He possibly may be considered lobbing it in, but I think if he gets the point and then Lockford get another attack, they might have the opportunity to get And it's gone wide. It, he, look, at he's a good free taker. Yeah. That, that's more an illustration of how awkward the breeze is. Um, now, he'll be disappointed with it, I know, yeah. but uh, still, it, it is a difficult breeze. Funny that uh, David Goff, the linesman, put up his flag there, and I just it, well, it was, was really blown out of his hand. Yeah. It was that strong. So the kick out's going to come from Kean Newman. Four points between the teams. Oh, That's well a good done. chip forward. Dara McGoran has it now. There's no goalkeeper, but Longford have intercepted it and they have the ball on that far side of the field. It's been hit forward. It's the ah, corner back. Patrick it? Fox, he's in a lot of space in the Fermanagh half. Now there's two Longford players coming forward. This is dangerous looking. The ball's been chipped in. It's between um, Garrett Kavanagh and now it's Darren Gallagher going forward. He's been done well. Brandon Horn doing well. Now if Longford still have it, the player goes to ground. Darren Gallagher gets a foot in and it's now going to Josh Largo. Well, it's from Anna have this ball. They need to retain possession here. Sean Quigley's over there. So is Darren McGurn. Dar Danny Leonard carries it outside the from Anna 65 metre line. What a great ball. Spreading it over here to Aidan Breen. He's in a lot of space. From Anna could really do with a score here. Indeed, they could en f engineer a goal. Stephen McGullion with Danny Leonard. Here's his opportunity to finish this game. Now it comes to Garvin Jones and from Anna have got a third goal. And that's it as Longford pushed up. The space was back there. I did say that there was an opportunity to engineer a goal. It went to Danny Leonard, come across to Stephen McGullion. He found Garvin Jones, and that's the third goal. That's it. 110 to Longford, 311 to Fermanagh. Yes, that was a great move, and it was it, it was started back here with the ball being won over. Josh Largo Ellis picked up the loose ball. Uh, two of the subs were involved, Danny Leonard and Garvin Jones, and there was a great decision made as they bore down on goals. The ball was played square yeah. to Garvin uh, Jones for him for a simple tap-in. And the crowd are starting to leave, I suppose. Uh, this was a crunch game. We came into it nervously. Um, a way to Longford, whom we have drawn with a number of times over yeah. the past couple of years. Um, but the start to the second half was, was just magic. Um, so f we're just getting full time in the other game in this division. It's been a victory for Louth. 115 for Louth, 113 to Westmeath. Let's say, not forget. Number 22, so Jake Smith comes in for number 15. Now, Sean Peter, Quigley. Sean Quigley has come off, and Jake Smith, he's gone on to get uh, a, a, a couple of minutes for, for him. I mean, it looks as if Romano will get the two points out this year, but I mean, we're, it's not. We're not saved yet, if you know what I mean. Oh, no, look, it's not a much. It's not a point of getting. This is not going to get us promotion. Yeah. But if we had it got beaten, it yeah, you'd have been stirring have been relegation in the face, like. Very awkward here uh, now. Uh, Take that. So the play is still continuing. It's uh, 42 minutes gone. 42, nearly 42 and a half minutes gone at the end uh, in the, in this second half. As Longford still have it, they're going to need goals. They're going to need two of them. And it's come here now to Ira O'Sullivan. He gives it Ooh. to number 21, who's Owen McCormick. McCormick, robust challenge, gives it back to uh, uh, O'Sullivan. And that fist pass has gone to Garrett Kavna And Fermanagh have it there on their own end line. Declan McCusker has it. He's going to put his boot till it comes out. And with that, referee um, Barry Judge blows his full-time whistle. And Fermanagh are now... They, they, have, uh, they, they have got... The victory, 3-11 to Fermanagh, one ten to Longford. Just as the Longford manager Billy O'Loughlin goes to speak with the referee. Well, you so can talk to him all day, but it won't make any difference yeah. to Fermanagh, especially. Um, I, I repeat again the, the start that we had to the second half. Although as it was overall, it showed how difficult it was to play against the breeze. Uh, we made little headway against it in the first half. Um, Longford made little headway against it, against it in the second, and if they hadn't got the goal, it would have been a poor enough return. Whereas we capitalised on the breeze, and when we got our shooters, Sean Quigley, Ryan Jones on the ball, uh, we, we racked up the scores. So overall, it's, you'd have to be very, very happy coming away from home. And wh wh they were under a lot of pressure, and our both teams were under pressure to get the points here today, or get something out of it. Um, 
So it was a performance to so that we can be grateful for. We're just trying to figure out the positions in the in the league here. After the games yesterday, uh, Limerick they defeated. Um, Limerick had a victory yesterday against Wicklow and uh, Limerick's at the top of the table with four games played there on six points. Wicklow's in the bottom, four games played there on one point. Fermanagh now have three games played and are up to three points. Longford have three games played and are still on one. Louth will have gone up to five points as well. Uh, so I, I will try and read it. So Limerick will be at the top on six. Antrim is on five. Westmeath are on four. Louth will be on five, so uh, it'll be Limerick, Antrim, Louth, then Westmeath. Leash today were playing. They were playing. Um, yeah, they were playing Antrim last night. So Leash are in 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 that position because they had a draw, so they're on three points as, as well as Fermanagh. So it's two ones, couple of threes, five, four, a four, a five, and a six. Is is the points in that there? Did you get the? <laughs> well, we still have we still have a game in hand. We still have to play a leash. Probably two fixed. home games coming up now. Yeah, I suppose the the thing is, Peter, from Anna are now going to have five games in five weeks. Yes, well, look, that's fine. Um, now, okay, injuries may impact on that, all right. Um, but after the win, right, yeah. Okay. So uh, Kildare have beaten Dublin. Mm. Oh well, we're not going to shed any tears about that now. No. Just, just in this, in this particular instance yeah. that we find ourselves, um, from Anna are now looking up instead of looking down. Um, so that in itself was a measure of what today's um, victory meant to us. And a good, we uh, some of the things we talked about at the start of the game, Peter Fermanagh need to take goal opportunities. They took three of them today. You need more from their forwards, and there was good, good forward play, and you know. They were going back, and certainly in the first half, when Fermanagh had, they had a lot of the possession. They were still able to re retain that possession and, and not waste it. Yes, and I thought um, <coughs> we we had good moves, which ended up with the right people on the ball. Uh, and in fact, the Danny Leonard uh, uh, assist, the ball that he played into Garvin Jones, was a great yeah. example of good decision making. Didn't kick it into somebody's backside, played it square for a simple tap in. Uh, so there were uh, quite a few good decisions made in our attack th today, which against Antrim and against Wicklow, we, we, we didn't make. Maybe we had the wrong people on the ball, um, maybe we made bad decisions, but today a lot of those things came good, especially in that purple patch, mm -hmm. the first 10 or 15 minutes of the second half. Uh, so no, no, you, we, we'll travel home happy enough. Not and to tell you with truth. that, Peter, I think we can wrap up our broadcast here. Many thanks to our listeners and our, our viewers and support team here. Final score in the Alliance Football League, Division 3, Round 4 game, Fermanagh 3-11, Longford 1-10.